Okay, let's look at problem number four. I'll read this to you. A baggage handler throws a 15 kilogram suitcase along the floor of an airplane luggage compartment with a speed of 1.2 meters per second. The suitcase slides two meters before stopping. Use work and energy to find the suitcase coefficient of kinetic friction on the floor. So we're trying to find this coefficient of kinetic friction and we're given that we, we have a, the mass of the bag, 15 kilograms. We know that it slides going at a speed of 1.2 meters per second initially, 1.2 meters per second. And it slides two meters before stopping, delta x, two meters. And because it's going to stop, our final velocity is zero meters per second. So these are all things, that, or these three are things that we can use for kinematic equations. And then use work and energy to find the suitcase coefficient of kinetic friction on the floor. Well, what we know about kinetic friction is that the kinetic friction force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times a normal force. And if this is sliding along a floor, then we're going to have the weight, which is mass times gravity. We're going to have the normal force. We're going to have the frictional force. Let's say it's moving this way. Then we'll have the friction force acting opposite of the direction of motion, which is Fk. And this normal force, because you know we're not, we don't have any incline or anything, so this normal force will have to balance out the weight. So this will also be mg. So another you know friction force will be mu k times mg. And since our acceleration is in this x direction, then our acceleration is going to have to equal to. Oh, okay, so we'll write f equals m a in the y direction. My forces. Let's say acceleration is this way then acceleration and forces are in this or the friction is in the same direction so I can write friction is equal to mass times my acceleration and mu k mg I'm taking this from over here equals mass times acceleration m's cancel out mu kg is equal to my acceleration so I need to find out what my acceleration is and I can find that out from these numbers so I know, or I know velocities, I know delta x, and I'm looking for a, I'm not interested in time, so I want that equation that doesn't have any time. It's gonna be v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus two delta x times a. I'm looking for a as an expression of this. So I'll have v final squared minus v initial squared over two delta x equals a, solving the algebra. And in this case, v final squared is zero. And so we will have, is v final squared? Yeah, v final squared is zero. And so we'll have negative vi squared over two delta x is equal to my acceleration. Now I already took into account the negative sign by making the acceleration in this direction. So I'm gonna take the positive one. Really over here, I should have negative a, I guess. Positives cancel. So the negative sign is being taken care of by the fact that I we had motion positive this way and I made A going this way. So that's why the negatives didn't work out there. But over here, I'm gonna plug it in. I need to plug it in as a positive so for the signs to work out. V initial squared over two delta x. And last thing is I wanna get mu k by itself, so I'll divide by g. So mu k equals v i squared over two delta x times g. We get a number for that. So initial velocity is 1.2, square that, divide that by 2, divide that by delta x, which is also 2, and divide that by 9.81.037. That's what we have here for the problem. And for the units, I just you can quickly check that all the units are in SI. Meters per second, kilogram, meters, meters per second. So everything works out. And remember that this number does not have units. It is a dimensionless number. So I'm done.